Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Hexia affects more than 50% of all cancer patients. Uh, it's characterized by uh, weight loss, predominantly of skeletal muscle, but also of fat. The impacts on patients' quality of life uh, is associated with increased morbidity and increased mortality. In spite of this, it's a relatively poor understanding of the molecular processes in skeletal muscle in humans. Uh, what is thought from animal and cell models is that skeletal muscle loss is due to an imbalance of the anabolic and catabolic pathways in favor of protein degradation, driven by pro-inflammatory cytokines. Protein pathways uh, that are involved are listed there. Uh, certainly in red are the two main uh, protein pathways, the victim protein pathway and autophagy pathway. Um, this slide uh, illustrates uh, the, those pathways in more detail, and also the literature that has contributed to our understanding of this. Uh, so we have the FOXO transcription factors activate the ubiquitin protein E2 ligase, which in skeletal muscle with two uh, specific MRF1 and MAF box, which then uh, selectively target mice and heavy chain, uh, leading to muscle wasting. Uh, more recently, FOXO transcription factor also been found to uh, target uh, uh, components of the autophagy pathway. Uh, the study circle in red there is really the only human study that has uh, tried to address any of these pathways. And thus, we uh, set about exploring the pathways of human cancer connection. Uh, so, we recruited uh, uh, patients with upper GI cancer undergoing uh, resection, corrected abdominis uh, biopsy at the time of surgery, uh, patients with phenotype for weight loss and uh, moderate uh, data. Uh, CRP was used to define uh, systemic inflammation. The second cohort were recruited um, independently uh, to validate the findings from the first cohort. There was also a small control group of patients with benign or so the uh, cancer patients were older, had higher weight loss, and uh, a lower BMI than the controls, and the two cancer cohorts were well matched. Uh, so first we looked at FOXO1 and FOXO3A in uh, the rectus abdominis, the lysates, using the lamplates, and the loading control. And um, shown across the top is FOXO1 on the left in weight loss, and uh, in the right in the of systemic inflammation. And then below that is FOXO3A, and you can see that. We didn't find any significant differences across these groups. We used qPCR to look at expression of MRF1 and MAFOX, which are the E3 ligases. Um, and again, across the groups, for both E3 ligases, we didn't see any difference in the, in the uh, increase in fold change. Um, when we looked at mice and heavy chain uh, protein levels, uh, the levels of the protein levels were similar across the groups. Um, looking at components of the autophagy pathway, DNA3, which is important in the induction of autophagy, and gamma one which is important in the uh, formation of the autophagism. Um, we see here the uh, correlation plots, um, and for both DNA3 uh, and gamma one there are strong significant correlations uh, for weight loss and systemic inflammation. So we go back to the original uh, diagram. Uh, our data didn't suggest that all the fossil transcription factors or the E3 ligase for the mice and heavy chain. Was some evidence on autophagy. It still remained a question. What are the key pathways in human cancer connexia? To address this, we use transcriptome uh, microwave uh, gene chip profiling using aftermetrics and chips. Uh, data was analyzed with the, the appropriate software and genes with a false discovery rate of less than 10% were examined. Using this approach, we found 73 genes which positively co varied and 9 genes which negatively co varied with weight loss. These are strong uh, correlations. See. If we then perform this simple cost analysis, as is shown by this heat map here, as you see on the right, a list of the, the gene names and across the bottom of the weight loss. So this gene signature drew the patient into two groups divided by weight loss of 5%. We've seen that our gene signature could predict those with true connexia. Interestingly, the majority of the genes have not previously been associated with connexia in the animal models. Um, there's a notable absence of FOXO and these values which supported our uh, previous wet lab data. We then took the nine highest correlating uh, genes from this gene signature listed here uh, and validated those in the receptor samples using qPCR. <coughs> Shown here are correlation plots with uh, red is the PCR and black is the microarray. You can see from the heat map on the right that eight of the nine uh, genes, uh, the PCR validated the array findings. Uh, given the connection of the total body muscle, and then sort of biological validation of the advanced satellites and diatomite muscles uh, from an independent cohort. Again, there's association for two of these, campionase 2 b and type 1, uh, campionase 2 b and diatomite vascular satellites, and type 1 in vascular satellites of weight loss. 
given the mRNA uh, data for the camp phase two, we then looked at the original rex abdominis samples for the phosphoric camp phase two posing levels, which is the constituted, the active form of camp phase. And we saw that uh, in those patients with weight loss, there's a small but significant increase. We finally, I wanted to answer the question uh, is it biological or all of these biomarkers in, in species of muscle likely to do that? We looked at the relationship between our gene signature and the known biological interaction between gene ontology and uh, ingenuity pathways. Shown here are the ingenuity pathways in the and the on the right. You can see the homogenin camp phase 2 uh, network supporting the previous data. <coughs> and on the left, there's an IL6 and IL4, uh, which are important in uh, species of muscle metabolism. And IL6, of course, a uh, chrome actually cited by as well. Uh, and then at the bottom, we have the links with the androgen receptors and the glucocorticoid receptors, uh, which are important in uh, <coughs> maintaining skeletal muscle mass. So it did seem that the gene signature did have biological relevance. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, such an array suggests uh, our data suggests that the prominence of the pathways <coughs> differs between human and pre clinical models of enhancing exit, uh, where a signature that's uh, more in keeping with failing protein synthesis seems to be more important. We also have identified validities as a gene signature and novel biomarkers, and nice to be in Taiwan. Though, given that the, uh, these haven't really been explored before, we need to look further into their role. I'd like to acknowledge my uh, supervisors, other members of the lab, and uh, the funding bodies. Thank you, that's uh, very nice and attentive. This is, uh, I'm sure you've just really asked this, but how do you know this is? Yes, um, I mean, the, the, it, it's a difficult question to address because yeah, all these patients will have. Some people are starving. And yes, they haven't got cancer. yes, and what we have done is we've overlapped our, the uh, microarray uh, gene signature with other data sets um, and, you know, using uh, sepsis and diabetes and endurance exercise, and there's no overlap no between them. So it does seem to be a specific signature for cancer and exit. I mean, the, all these patients will have a degree because uh, obviously when you have uh, uh, pro inflammatory cytokines, that actually induces the anorectin factors as well. And that's one of the contributions to the you know, say in that But you would then expect to see overlap with the. You would, but we didn't find any. You didn't show any data. I'm sure. There were just how many people there? Well, I mean, healthy people have a lot of macroscopy. You know, there's patients with incisional hernias. Um, yes, thanks. it's a very nice study, but I think you're being potentially unnecessarily elaborate because you, you've identified gene signature. What uh, Professor Bradley's alluding to is what you clearly need to do is follow those patients out, correct for dysphagia with esophageal cancer, stent occlusion in the pancreas cancer patients, and see whether those patients who lose weight have your gene signature compared to those who don't. Surely. Well, I mean, I'm glad you that point out. I mean, this is obviously a cross sectional. Uh, you know, go and say this divides the patients up by weight loss, but what we can say is what happens to those patients afterwards. And actually what we're uh, you know addressing now is following these patients up and saying does this signature predict those who go on to lose weight, those who survive more poorly about other complications. So at the present time you can't actually say that your gene signature correlates with weight loss. Uh, we can say it correlates with weight loss at the time you know these patients are you know at the time of early season you can't say that that goes on to those patients who subsequently developed further weight loss. Professor Olsen. Great, simple thing. You didn't, didn't really tell us about how you measured what their baseline normal weight was yeah. and when you made this other measurement or measurements that allowed you to say they had a percentage weight loss. Yeah. How did you work that out? Um, so the, the, uh, the uh, patients were all uh, weight at the time of surgery by myself, so that's where the, that final weight came from. Weight before I uh, was taken from their uh, clinical notes if they had one, or, or uh, self-reported weight loss. Um, so we say, what's your, uh, you know, what would be your stable weight before you're on well, and over what sort of time have you noticed you've lost weight. And that's in looking at, previously we've looked at that, and it's, and it's shown there's a fairly good way, patients fairly know the weight loss, so that's how we estimate the weight loss. So, can I ask yeah. you, so, how many of the patients that have other treatment done as well as the <coughs> surgery that we have had? Like, how many have keep them? And then the, uh, well, the, 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 none of the pancreatic ones like uh, chemotherapy and uh, none of the gastric ones.
Wait, fine, wait, fine. Sure. It has been shown that TNF alcohols 